When I was in college, one of my favorite courses was sociology. And while my particular college did not offer a full-blown sociology track, I enjoyed taking the course and I ended up following up on my curiosity about sociology on and off through the rest of my adult life. And recently, I came across a book that resurfaced all of this, and it seems very relevant to all the things that I'm talking about on this channel. The book is named Telling About Society, and it was written by a prominent sociologist, Howard S. Becker. And the book is primarily aimed at people who are training to be sociologists who are already practicing sociologists. But it is written well enough and broadly enough and clearly enough, it's not full of jargon, thank God, that I think most anyone would be able to pick up on it and get something useful from it, especially people who are writing science fiction and fantasy. And here's why. I'm going to read a little bit from the back of the book to give you an idea of what it's about. Telling About Society, the third book in Howard S. Becker's best-selling series of writing guides for social scientists, explores the ways knowledge about society can be shared and interpreted through different forms of storytelling. Fiction, films, photographs, maps, and even mathematical models can be powerful tools for sharing knowledge, and yet many of these models remain outside the boundaries of conventional social science. So what the book goes into, basically, is how the different storytelling models that we have, um, and that we don't necessarily associate with sociological work, but that exist in the rest of our culture, can be used for that work. And one of the examples that he gives is when he takes a number of photos that were created for collection about American life in the the first part of the 20th century. And he lays them out and says, okay, what does each of these say about its subject? What can we draw from it? What what do we feel like is being put in front of us for, uh, for a takeaway? And we can reach lots of different conclusions about this. And he does the same thing for what we could glean from a particular graph or a chart because of the way it's put together, or even a map. And one of the points that he makes is that when you use something like this, creating it is by necessity an act of distillation. You're leaving things out of the frame. When you take a picture, you have to point the camera at a certain thing in a certain time and place, and you have to leave stuff outside of the frame. So what's in the frame and out is going to make all the difference. And one of the things that exposes, as he explains, is how much of this can we leave out for the sake of the distillation and still be honest about our intentions? Where does the line for that lie? And he doesn't so much give an answer as he does give several ways to think about how to get to an answer, which I think is much more constructive. And from all of this, he comes up with a couple of really important gems that I think are useful to science fiction and fantasy writers. He talks about modes of presentation and storytelling. And by modes, I mean things like whether you can use a photo, a graph, a chart, a narrative, what have you. And he says, every way of telling is perfect for something in the sense that every single one of these modes will convey something perfectly well in a way that the others don't. And that we always want to know what for that particular mode is going to be best suited to the things that we want to convey. I say all this because when people write fantastic fiction, It always seems to me to be a form of sociology in a way. We're going into a new world, and we want to learn as much as we can about that world as a writer. And we also want to be able to communicate to the readers as much as we can about that world. But we want to do it elegantly. We want to do it in a way that's constructive, interesting, and absorbing, and in a way where we don't want to flood the reader. We don't want to do info dumps. We want the focus that we give to any one particular thing to deliver the best possible set of information, the most enriching set of information that we can for that particular thing. So as I was reading it, as you can see, I was uh, making a great many notes. I kept running across various ways that this could be translated into the writing of fiction. And in fact, he draws those parallels explicitly at many points. So there were times when he was basically telling me what to do in his own language. For instance, I think one of the most important points that he makes is about novelty. And by this, I mean, when we write a book, we want to, we want to give people something fresh. And this is the way that he expresses it. What makes artists who take up the work of social analysis so interesting is that they don't want to present the formulaic and already known or use already well-known language. They want to show the people who look at their pictures, he's talking about photos in this case, 
something they haven't seen before. When photographers do use visual language everyone knows, they want to make the viewer see new meanings in it. That's the kind of thing that I think applies also to writing. When you show something in your writing, you don't want to fall back on the cliched, obvious way of doing it. Something that was, in other words, just inherited wholesale from other books where they're doing roughly the same thing. You want to discover on your own terms and for your own story how to show things and in what form. There's something else that Becker brings up that I think is really important to science fiction and fantasy writers, because one of the things I've noticed about a lot of science fiction and fantasy writers is how they, they seem to have this impulse to be completist. They want to jam the entire world into their books, and that's why the books get so big, and that's why they end up being so many of them. But he makes this point, which I think is really relevant and valid. We could say that people who make and use a particular kind of representation, a film or a table or a novel or a mathematical model, have come to some agreement as to what will be plenty good enough for their purpose. Plenty good enough for their purposes of the makers, whoever they are and whatever their interests are, and plenty good enough for the users, whoever they are and whatever their interests are. Not perfect, not as good as everyone would like, but good enough, given the circumstances, to rely on for guidance. And I think what he's arguing here against is the idea that the book basically has to be a complete and total mirror of the world that we're trying to talk about. It doesn't have to capture everything. If it captured everything, then it would be ridiculously long, or it would wind up getting defocused, or it would just be the world itself that we're talking about. We wouldn't need a book. What he's saying is leaving out details is another way for us to do justice to the right details, the details that matter for constructing the story and propelling us through it and making us care about the people in it. Now, I've barely scratched the surface of why this book has been so valuable and useful for me in just the short time that I've been reading it. And again, if anything that I've said here sounds like it's sparking interest, go pick it up. It's available in print. It's available digitally. And I really think just sitting with it for a day or two and reading through it and and not trying to feel intimidated about the fact that it's aimed at us maybe aimed at a slightly different audience i think it's going to pay tremendous dividends and get you thinking about how it is that we want to present the worlds that we're going to construct for our readers i know that in my case at least one of the future books that i'm working on has already been influenced tremendously by this thinking and i hope to be able to talk about that at some point in a future video too See you around.